Hello folks, this is, I believe, episode 3 of My Life with Hydrocephalus, and I know I had told some of you that I would share with you some of the more positive aspects of growing up in and, out of, in and around the hospital, but I was reminded of a few aspects that I feel I need to share with you prior to that. Uh, that will be in another video. Um, there are some things that you really should know if you're new to hydrocephalus, like make sure you check on your surgeons, your general surgeons, your anesthesiologist, your neurosurgeon, you know, do as much background check as you can prior to them operating on you or a loved one. Um, I learned that the hard way. So the year is 2008 and I had gone in for a, what I thought was a routine um, checkup for my shunt. And the doctor, the neurosurgeon, found a, what they called a pseudocyst. Now, a pseudocyst is where the end of the tube forms a small non cancerous cyst, and basically the, um, Spinal fluid is feeding into that cyst. It basically, it's like a balloon, a water balloon. Um, and they had slated me for surgery. So I went in and uh, was like, okay, we, we, you know, he, he, the way that the neurosurgeon explained it, it would be a relatively simple procedure. They would go in, drain the cyst, and you know, move the end of the shunt so that it didn't or the end of the tube that goes to the shunt uh, so that it w wasn't feeding into it. So it sounded relatively simple. Well, that relatively simple procedure turned into, and let me back up, the doctor also said that I would only be in the hospital for approximately three days. Well, that three-day approximation turned into 46 days, 39 of which... I spent in ICU. What had happened was, <laughs> excuse me, I w went in for the procedure and was feeling fine afterwards. The, literally, the, like, the day I was about to be released, and that was like, they held me overnight. Actually, I think they held me for two days just to make sure everything was good. Um... And I had gone in to relieve myself in the bathroom prior to being released. Now, this was on the day of release that this happened. And I noticed, because they had done it laparoscopically, and I'm a big guy. And I'm not in favor of laparoscopic surgery for anybody my size. I'm just not. But that's my opinion, my experience. Okay, I'm not a doctor. So, talk to your doctor about it. Um, I will always say that. But, yeah, I was about to be released, and I had gone in to go to the bathroom and noticed a brownish discharge coming from what was my belly button. Well, I sat down on the toilet, and I pulled the emergency string because it concerned me that much. Well, the nurse walked in. And I took one look, and the look on her face told me everything I needed to know. I, I knew I wasn't getting released that day. Uh, within a matter of three minutes, I had that nurse, another nurse, my neurosurgeon, and three other doctors in that small bathroom with me. It had turned out that the general surgeon who had assisted the neurosurgeon had nicked my bowel, and I was excreting fecal matter. Um, so they told me they were rushing me in for emergency surgery right then and there. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you that after that surgery, I know what it feels like to be gut shot. I was in 
agonizing pain. They literally had to lay me open. They removed about a foot of my small intestine. Um, and then so you know, it cleaned me out, put me on antibiotics, and sewed me back up. They ended up pulling the shunt out to do a ventriculostomy, which is where they take the shunt and they put it on the outside of your head. And mine at the time was over here on the left-hand side. So it ran across the back of my head. The, there was a tube that ran across the back of my head into a bag that drained into that bag. Well, it was to the point that anytime I wanted to stand up or needed to stand up, for whatever reason, I had to call a nurse so that they could turn the shunt off. Because if I hadn't, I would have, as they said, my brain would have herniated and I would have been dead right there on the spot. So, yeah, th that was pretty terrifying to hear those words. Um, as I said, I spent 46 days in the hospital. 39 of those were spent in the ICU. Um, I ended up having to have two more surgeries, one to put the shunt back in. There was some leakage, so they had to go in and repair the leakage. So I ended up, uh, during that 46 days, having surgeries um, 18, 19, and 20. Okay. Um, so yeah, the, it it pays to 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 know your who your general surgeon is. It turned out that uh, this general surgeon was on his way out, meaning he was about to retire. Um, he had just gotten to that point in his career that he was just. And I, upon reading some of the reports on this doctor, which I should have done prior, but I didn't. Um, again, this is how I learned to double check everything there is to know about my doctor. Um, he did not have the best reputation. Um, from what I understand, he is now since retired. So thank God he's not damaging anyone else. Um, so yeah, that was, that was the experience that I had at 38 years old where the, the, what was the, the worst experience of my surgical life occurred. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to drop them down in the comments. Um, and also please like, share, and subscribe. It does help with the algorithm to get this out. And again, I am doing this so that you all have a better understanding of what it's like growing up with hydrocephalus. So until the next installment, I will see you all very, very soon. I want you to take care of yourselves and each other, and I'll talk to you later.